accumulate a lot of physical things to hide the true state of your mind your understanding will take them away from your life until you look like what you believe are we together now let's do a little experiment look up don't feel bad how many of you have noticed that certain financial blessings only come at certain levels you never cross 30,000 mark if somebody blesses you with 200,000 it will finish and return back to that range it, your understanding pegged you like the thermostat of an ion you know how an ion is you program it to be this hot when it gets there what happens it breaks that's it there are people who will never cross hundred thousand give them one million they will laugh only for one week that money the, the behavioral patterns that come from faulty thinking will alter their behavior and make them act in a way a manner that reduces them back to the mindset of those who are hundred thousand allocators so it's not enough to just claim and say i'm a millionaire there is an understanding that resonates with that level of living and you must upgrade in your mind it's like resonance in physics remember those who are science-based there's something called resonance in physics that when you hit a tuning fork is that true at a particular frequency every other object within that environment that is the same frequency without touching it starts resonating that's how it is every result you have in the spirit has a spiritual frequency mental level that calls it when you want a result that is higher than your level of thinking it cannot resonate to it so your mindset must rise let me tell you when it gets there it will come in a heartbeat forget about the physical activities that ask themselves to manifest it in your life that's that's little issue but we focus on who will bless me and how it will come that's that's not the issue just settle it in your mind you have programmed yourself truly to be successful when you want to know the true secret behind a man's result don't look at the physical results under study the understanding of that man you see that you get blessed from successful people not just by benefiting from the result of their success unfortunately that's what mediocres do they are obsessed by the result the tie the shoe the watch the car the um, anointing the miracles wheelchair no there is an understanding that helps that man to partner with the holy spirit so that that kind of result be produced when you have that construction then you are ready for victory the price of mental transformation are you still living like your yesterday and expecting tomorrow's result it doesn't work that way sir you will never never be able to receive results at the mental states that brought the challenge that has pegged you let me tell you what challenges are challenges are a proof that your current level of understanding has reached its expiry level the moment you are confronted with an, a supposedly unsurmountable challenge is a proof to you I teach the school of ministry students that challenges are a letter from your future to you saying I am there and I am real but your mental state now cannot take you there challenges are a letter from your future to you saying I exist I am real but you will not arrive there with your current level of understanding I am passionate about God exposing my area of ignorance it doesn't embarrass me some of us are so egocentric that the moment you are aware that there is need for upgrade in an area it embarrasses us you must be flexible enough to admit that where i am is a reflection of something i do not know are we together do you believe this apostle i don't have friends everybody hates me it's a lie there is something about your understanding that keeps creating that reality apostle money comes and it disappears yes there can be demonic issues but the demons don't just come and act foolishly they act upon a mindset that can host them the day your mindset becomes hostile to their presence that's the day you break free that's why true deliverance after casting out the demons there must be a reconstruction of your understanding to make your environment no longer conducive for the activity of demon spirits it is almost vain to lay hands and cast out demons and leave the same mindset that brought them you are only recycling a journey of endless suffering 
That's why when demons find out that a particular man of God does not have intelligence enough to holistically secure people's deliverance, the demons are in a hurry to leave. They mock you. Before you raise your hand, they go knowing that their access point is still there. The door is open. Are we together? Something about your thinking is responsible for your limitation. There is a way Africa thinks. We have subsistent thinking. There is a way men of God think that don't give them results. There is a way they think that they get results. Please, every time you see a man of God, a system, a businessman, whatever, commanding results, don't enjoy the flamboyancy of the physical results. But if you really want to receive, you must be able to labor to buy into their understanding. So the Bible says this, let this mind, permit this mind, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5, permit this mindset, this thinking, this construction, this set of understanding to be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. And then things will respond to you the same way they responded to Jesus. Born around a manger, still didn't matter. Upgraded his mind 30 years. He was to live 33 and a half years and he spent over 90% of his life committing to development and in three years he did something that through eternity will not recover from listen listen hear this advice never be in a rush to manifest physical results in your life don't be in a rush to start business someone met me one time and said sir what the way you are looking at me I don't know what I meant prophetically or physically. He said, what business do you think I can do? I said, none. You will fail in every business you do, no matter how simple it is. And this is the reason. It's not because you are lazy. It is because you do not get the understanding of a prosperous person by default. Sincerity is one of the seeds for greatness. So you may be sincere. It's like someone who is very sincere, wants to transport you from one place to the other, but cannot drive. Will his sincerity take you there? As well-meaning as that person is, it's not if you die, it's when that car will capsize. Don't labor to show physical results. You try to buy a shoe of 100,000 to make a statement, I guarantee you, your carelessness and your wrong thinking is going to spoil that shoe. You'll be surprised that you never kick it on a wall, but in one month, the shoe will open up. Something about your wrong belief will mount pressure on that state. Your mind is saying it's a lie. Your physical realm is not agreeing with your mental realm. Something will happen. I've given you an analogy again and again. Take a poor person, take someone who is one of the least workers in any business organization or any company, put him in the director's office for two weeks. Don't tell him anything. Just put him there and say, you have unlimited access to this office. Do you know what he will do? Number one, he's going to steal. Are you seeing the mindset? He will steal because he knows for sure that he's only there for a short time. Number two, he will not clean and arrange the place. What can I get? So things the mediocre. What can I get? Not what can I give? He will sit down, watch television, drink all the juice in the fridge, snap himself, take selfies, and then try to, what can I steal? Oh, there's one carton of water. If I take five, nobody will know. That's a mediocre. That's the reason why he will remain where he is. In two weeks, he will turn that office into his mindset. But take a great man to a room that is messy, cobwebs everywhere, and he sits down. His mindset refuses and says, no, this is not you. Whoever has your mindset should sweep the room, and so he sweeps the room. Whoever has the mindset should clean the room. In five days, you come back and see the same room, no cobwebs. He would have bought a rock to put there. As at the time he was deciding, he didn't have money, but his mindset told him how it will come is the last. The most important thing is to plan. There is power when you set goals. This is a renewed mind. A poor man will say, I beg this Nigeria, I don't have any father anywhere and remain there. After one year, he has not been able to buy a rock. Something about our understanding is responsible for the way we are. Is that true? I look at myself and I look at the dimensions God wants to take me and I look at many things I do not know 
that is responsible for my current level of result and so I continue to search find out if I know what follow Runsha Alakija knows then I will be a billionaire in dollars correct listen respect results don't trivialize results results are not luck especially predictable results predictable result time is a revealer of the accuracy of your convictions when you see a result that is sustained it was based on laws it wasn't based on magic i can dash you one million but you cannot become a millionaire for five years by mistake no sir it's a lie I can lay hands on you temporarily and you can even lay hands on someone the wheelchair and leave the person but brothers and sisters you will not organize crusades for two years non-stop when intrinsically you have not received that grace the bible never said the donkey talked forever he talked for a moment and his mouth was shut the bible never said the rod bordered forever psalm 78 verse 41 a scripture that has become a national anthem in this place he said but they limited the holy one they limited the holy one they were in the wilderness and they limited him can god make a way can god make a way can god make a way the bible says they limited him as mighty as god is brothers and sisters we can limit him through our understanding we can limit him someone met me one time and said apostle God doesn't want to encourage me to love. I said, what's the meaning of that? He said, I've told God I want to buy a Dex Bible. I've told God I don't even want clothes for myself. Just spiritual items, messages, anointing oil, all these kind of things. And God, nobody is even help. And I said, show me the paper where you wrote them down. Show me the scripture you, at, you, you put on them. And he said, no, I don't have anything. I said, so if I were God, I would do the same thing. Show me the paper. Where have you gone to the market to find out how much anointing oil is? That's a proof of faith. It's a sign that you know it will come. Faith is conviction and the action you take based on that conviction. Are we together? Yes. Let me tell you how to know people don't walk by faith. They are vague in their expectations. Vagueness is a sign you are not sure the result will come. The Bible says, give us. He told you who to give. Number two, he says, this day, when, what, our daily bread. Give us, this day, our daily bread. Specificity is very important in manifesting faith. So that when the result comes, you are sure that this is what I released my faith for. Is God speaking to us? When you package your physical environment without the requisite mental upgrade and transformation, you have only flattered yourself. It's like throwing your money in a basket because everything will disappear. Please hear me, ladies and gentlemen, especially for we who are young. I know that we live in a society that mounts pressure on a gentleman and a lady to show. Uh -uh, you finished school four years ago till now. You can't even buy a nice jean. And so we go out of our way to try to paint our physical world to look like a reality that we have upgraded ourselves into. And we keep, you notice that you keep rising up and falling, rising up and falling. Your physic, you try to fake it, your mindset brings you back. That's what happened to many of our loved ones. I've told people, why fake something that can be real? You don't have to fake it when it can be real brothers and sisters hear me you may be in a small one room right now no carpet no recharge card no nothing you are using a, a simple phone that you don't even know the name there's no name on it you just bought it somewhere don't allow that disturb you if you can take the word of god the beautiful thing about your mind is that it's not limited by time and space continue to upgrade yourself in the name of Jesus, I may have Gary today, but I will feed nations. And you study the word of God and it's constructing your mind. There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Ah, 
so an attachment for things is why money doesn't come you write it in the name of Jesus I have no attachment to things when God brings them money is a slave and a servant never to become a God and a master I am a giver and then you study again and God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work so it's God that can make all grace abound that means I don't need to worry about how the results will happen it is God's office that allocating how the physical results will manifest are we together you begin to study you see the Bible says love never fails that means if there is anything that is failing in my life when I add love to it I can turn the results around so you construct your mindset let me tell you the first thing that will happen to you when your mind begins to transform your environment will start fighting you because immediately your friends and your environment your thinking will start making you act in a physical way that will make them say what are, are you the only one who is a Christian what is all these things where we are talking about all of this in I beg man must walk and he said no sorry I don't speak like that again with all due respect something is happening to me say, hey you you better finish all that grammar and let's come and soak Gary they are trying to pull you back say the devil is a liar say it again And they'll pull you back and say it's true let me go back jerry this coin only i think you are just talking like fools even god knows why will i lie i'm like that I'm, I'm not and you start complaining and reprogram yourself back to your current state while people are watching football you buy a book 500 naira and you sit down when people are hilariously celebrating birthdays when they don't have any money God just opens a door, 10,000 naira, and you just say, ah, my birthday is tomorrow. Kai, will I die like that? Let me enjoy myself. Are we together? Your birthday clothes, 8,000. Whatever else you buy, you cook, and the money has finished. And you feel good about that day and continue suffering. Or someone can say, this is my birthday. I may not be a millionaire overnight, but let me make it the last birthday when the, by this time one year i should at least be able to have options for the food i eat we don't make that decision we don't study what are you doing i'm browsing something what who is that um somebody he i mean very powerful is a wonderful christian and he's speaking minded of great people say i beg i want to watch one film it just came out Am, am I mocking movies? No, please don't, don't misunderstand me. But I'm saying, if you continue to flatter yourself and not commit yourself to personal development, you will never be great. I was talking with a dear friend today and I was telling them, gone are the days where people think ministers are daft people. They are just people who manipulate the minds of people. Ministers are very intelligent people. It takes a lot of intelligence alongside spirituality to be able to communicate thoughts I was coming with one of the protocol persons and when we we're coming I was asking him what he's doing now and he said he wanted to go into public speaking and I said wow I said really everybody's a public speaker the moment you are a leader in any field you are a public speaker public speaking is all about communicating thoughts it takes intelligence it takes psychology it takes leadership it takes content not just that God sent you and say, go to America, go to um, whatever, and then you go and stand and say, well, the most important thing is the miracle that will happen right now. Don't worry, well, if you like, be sleeping while I'm talking. You will soon suspect you and say you are a herbalist because the foundation upon which the power comes. You see, our incompetence raises the propensity for suspicion. Especially where you know that there is the lavish anointing of God upon your life. You must have both a sound word and intellectual balance. So that as you are communicating the word of God, there is a, a synergy with your result. Anybody that listens knows that, no, 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 this person has paid his price. I will be silly believing that he should not be at this level of results. Say in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to pay the price of mental transformation I buy the truth and I sell it not hallelujah 
one way we transit mentally is to find out those who are current reflections of our aspirations and then to buy into their thinking and their paradigms here's how the bible puts it it says follow them so not everybody is worthy of being followed it says honor all men but you can't follow all men listen there is this african trado african mentality of loyalty to people ideas and systems that are obsolete and do not have capacity to make you great listen the bible says and david served his generation every generation has a curriculum of understanding you must understand the generation with which you are sent to minister to and be able to construct your mind to understand their needs and how best to communicate it i'm sent to minister to all men but i always tell people that the age range of my influence and my impact is 15 to 50. If you are within the range, age range of 15 to 50, you are within my generation of influence. Now that does not mean people like our daddy and our elderly ones here, I will bless you, but you will be surprised that Bishop Oyedeko and Papa Adeboye will be more useful to them than a young man like me. Is that true? because they grew with that generation if you're in ministry here and people tell you are ministering to young people you better rejoice and don't think it's an embarrassment because that means you'll be in ministry for a long time if you're in ministry and every of your member is at least 60 65 i have a very sad news for you you are not going to last because um those people are at the level of their life where they're interested in legacy don't tell them speak well no not at that age my brother they are writing books and mentoring another generation we laugh at those in children's ministry and say are ah, you as big as you are those children in 20 years will become leaders now in the world we have young people I foresee times when in the next 10 15 years you will have presidents in their 20s young people whose minds are malleable and flexible the world has grown enough to discern results more than biological age when you have results they allow you look at france has already set the pace now with their prime minister other nations will follow through a time will come when if you are not competent early you will join a queue that will never reach your turn forever i want you to believe what i'm saying it is true it is good that a man bears his yoke in his youth pay the price now pay the price now you may be laughed at now but pay the price the word of god is a seed containing the very life of god it is his agent of transformation as you receive these words in your heart with faith that life is released into your spirit and your life receives a supernatural lifting. Join Apostle Joshua Selman as he brings you God's words with simplicity and power. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands to heaven. Father, we give you all the praise. Tonight we declare that you are God. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and thank him. Lord, we glorify you. Let the name of the Lord be glorified. Let the name of the Lord be lifted. In the name of Jesus. I'd like you to pray one prayer and say, Father, grant me understanding tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. The entrance of thy word giveth light and even understanding unto the simple. Bring understanding, O God. Shila Parakato Sigata Briata Katosh. We receive understanding. We receive understanding in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, our eyes are on you tonight. You are the custodian of all wisdom. Spirit of the living God, we thank you. We are gathered tonight because we believe in you. We are gathered tonight to hear you speak. We ask, O oh God, that you speak.
cause our ears, cause our spirits to hear. We decree and declare that we are not rebels to your word. Let it come, let it produce results in lives. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, to Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd like to welcome all those connecting with us from several parts of the world. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you. For those of us who are here, the Lord honor you in the name of Jesus. The word of God will make us mighty in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me start tonight by prophesying to the worship team in the name of Jesus may your songs have wings may they go to the nations in the name of Jesus let there be greater portals open for you to have understanding you will bring the songs of the spirit and in the name of Jesus Christ your songs will be limitless the grace that multiplies our teachings around the world that same grace will take your songs beyond your borders I pray that you will hear these songs in the night. I pray that you will not belittle yourself. May every one of you be great and mighty in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Please be seated. Extraordinary results, part two. Please open your spirit to hear what I will be teaching you tonight. I came with a very heavy burden in my heart. And... Um, I trust that God will grant us grace. We began to share last week how that results are not a mistake. Results are not a coincidence. Every time you see results in the life of a person, whether spiritual results, whether financial results, whether intellectual results, they are governed by laws. One of the things that we have taught again and again in this house is after an encounter with the person of God. The next thing you have to understand are the principles that govern this kingdom that we live in. Are we together? The same way there are physical laws in our world and they are all responsible for different dimensions of results. There is gravity, there, there's friction, there are all kinds of forces at work. Whether you acknowledge their presence or not, they are still at work the same way we have physical laws that's the same way we have spiritual laws and these laws are responsible for certain outcomes that we desire praise the Lord one of the keys for productivity and results in this kingdom is to be able to connect your desires the spiritual laws that are responsible for the result you see most of us are aware of the existence of these principles but we do not know which one is responsible for what result. so we try them at random hoping and my assignment is to be able to guide your understanding that with accuracy and certainty and conviction you know what spiritual principle is responsible for what outcome are we together now and we started um, last week by talking about a few prices that we must pay i told us how that in the kingdom we receive by grace but then the bible says it is true faith by grace available true faith becomes your experience 
anything that is not available by grace cannot become your testimony cannot be part of your life the grace of God is not just saving grace the grace of God available the kingdom that can only be provided for by Christ is called grace now your faith is a summation of all the principles that you engage in that helps you to make that that has been available in Christ to become your experience today salvation is by grace your faith makes it your experience healing is by grace your faith makes it your experience prosperity is by grace your faith makes it your experience so grace alone without engaging faith just leaves realities as potentials your life will never become that experience engaging these laws are a contribution your own alignment with god to make sure that these truths become your reality and i began to share with us a few things i've not found one person in my life who does not want to succeed now others may not admit others are outspoken about being successful others are religious about it but the truth about it is that every human being on earth of the 7.2 billion people you ask the arm robber why he's stealing he tells you he wants to succeed correct ask someone in the hospital why they don't want to die they believe that they have a future and there there's so much they want to do with their lives and i'm teaching us this because i do not want us to waste our time shadow boxing trying to find meaning and relevance life was not designed to be lived by guesswork you don't have that much time to guess you have to walk through life with a level of exactness and certainty if you believe that say amen the first price we discussed last week just a quick recap is the price of knowing god daniel 11 verse 32 the b part it says but the people that do know their god the first price any believer has to pay is the price for an encounter with god not just principles principles are only useful when there is an encounter with a person take note when you begin to pursue principles and mysteries and you do not have an encounter with God, it will be vain babblings. It will make you arrogant and eventually your results will destroy you. It is your encounter with the person of the Christ through the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit that makes every other result you get relevant. There are people who become rich and leave God. There are people who become influential and leave God. That's because they had access to principles but they skipped the place of encounter. So the starting point of any kind of results and that which will last is an encounter. Everybody say an encounter. You must pay the price to know God. Please get the teaching, last week's teaching. I don't want to go over it again. Knowing God requires time. Knowing God requires passion. Knowing God requires prioritizing Him above all things. Carnality is not having money. Carnality is not having materials. Carnality is an attachment. The attachment you have a poor person can be carnal you've just not had enough physical materials to help you demonstrate the carnality are we together now and um, there are many many carnal people in the body of Christ attached to things possessions money cars material things here and there and um, you must pay the price to know God number two is the price of genuine submission to authority I taught us about that and I'm glad that many people are beginning to understand this there is an imbalance of authority there is an imbalance of submission that has been taught for many years in the body of Christ is the imbalance of usurping people's rights and making men demigods that's an error is on scripture there is a place for submission and I took out time to explain to us that the purpose of authority is for protection, provision, and promotion. Nobody promotes himself. Is that true? And um, I know we are all in Christ, but the election of grace has separated people into strata. You violate God's system of blessing, you will pay for it. Everybody has access to the Christ, but God has designed that there is a system by which men receive results one of it is authority so there is an imbalance of authority where people do not have rights again they don't have brains men of god become the gods of people they tell you when to eat they tell you when to have another child they tell you no 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 although that is rubbish 
is just the insecurity of men on rampage so they spiritualize it and carve out a group of people that can find victims of their insecurities that's imbalance praise the lord paul said follow me as i follow christ in other words if at any point you don't find me following christ do not follow me i want us to be very very clear about the concept of authority there are many insecure men and women of god well-meaning but they carry their complexes from poor backgrounds they get filled with the holy spirit and you know africa is a very loyal continent we are loyal to men of god we are loyal to pastors and churches and sometimes it is that loyalty that has become the unbecoming of people they were doing well until a man came into their life in the name of fatherhood and mentorship and wrecked and destroyed their life they made people to leave jobs when they shouldn't leave jobs they made people to not take drugs when they should take drugs they made people to all kinds of things and destroy people's lives separated husbands and wives when they have no business separating because of some kinds of hilarious vision so we must be careful submission is important authority is important so that's one side of the imbalance the other side of the imbalance is those who uh, in a bit to address what i just explained now tell people there's no such thing as authority everybody can access god no you fight the body of christ you lose there is a system with which the church was built are we together the bible tells us that the church was built like a building he said every house is built by some man then he says god is the builder of all our work with god is based on relationship but kingdom advancement is based on covenant and i've explained it to us the way that god operates on earth is that all his multifaceted dimensions are resident within individuals they become the portals through which the generation experiences that dimension of god so prosperity for instance god finds a man opens his understanding to an unusual dimension of god in that area and then makes that man a symbol a portrait a representation of that possibility so that every other man on earth who must enter that dimension must do it in alignment to both god and that system he has set up you will never enter that di you may believe in god but if you do not believe in what that individual represents and submit to it you will never enter that dimension no man will work greatly in the healing ministry insulting benny Hinn. no man will work greatly in prosperity and faith insulting kenneth copeland even if you believe you have more revelation than him he's more than a human being he's a system that communicates a dimension of god's reality the bible is full of mysteries and um i wish i had time i don't want to go back to walk all of those remember there was a time when the nation of israel wanted to fight war they were fighting war and moses these guys had their swords but behind the scene there was a man who was lifting his rod is that true the bible says as he lifted the rod although the people were the ones doing the physical fighting but the results were controlled by one man's hand now watch this the bible says a time came when moses's hand was getting weak the wisest thing to do is to say sir you are an elder just sit down let me help you is that not true the wisest thing to do is to help the man not everything can be done by everybody ask saul why he lost his throne he said what is there somewhere we can't be waiting for you are you so special give me the knife and when samuel came he said saul what have you done he said you would have allowed me come god would have preserved your throne forever but now you have done foolishly today by this foolish act violating rankings in the spirit your throne is taken from you authority is real not everybody you see is a pure human being i don't know how to make you believe this but it's true for this cause many are weak many are sick people's pride has stopped them from entering simple cheap victories because of their refusal to understand authority it's not human worship there are some battles that are needless if you fight them if you fight those if you ever fight those battles it's because you are not wise are we together yes 
truly speaking there are some battles that are products of foolishness Moses's hand began to go down the Bible never said their sword stopped being sharp just because a man's hand was going down they started defeating them and they said look whatever we would do to support your position for the sake of our victory we'll do it I know what many people in our generation will do Moses you are not the only one God is talking to please help me with that rod Jerry and hold it and watch the rod kill you first it looks simple until you see what is happening in the spirit a man can say God prosper you say what is there is it not just positive conversion you too God prospers you and then you don't see any result the law of authority all the blessings of God come through the scriptural chain of authority it is from Aaron's head down to his beard then it goes down to his skirt praise the Lord when authority is done properly it produces wonders when there is any violation of it whether on the part of the supposed spiritual father or on the part of those who submit to that grace there will always be problem proximity is not submission availability hanging around a grace is not genuine submission submission is not weakness please listen understand this it is not a proof of weakness only a foolish man of God will take advantage of people because of their submission to his grace are we together the law of authority learn it use it command cheap victories in your life it's not idolatry when it is done within the confines of scripture it is not idolatry number three we have a lot to do today the third price that we must pay to produce extraordinary results is the price of mental transformation the price of mental transformation numbers chapter 13 please help us media it's a long reading from verse 25 the price of mental transformation the sacrifice of upgrading your paradigm the laborious sacrifice through the agency of the word and every other material whose thoughts are consistent with the word take note first the word of god scripture and then every other material intellectual material whose thought line is consistent with the word of god qualifies to be an instrument of mental transformation there are many believers who study the bible but they do not study the works of people who love god and who have paid the price to access these laws listen let me tell you this the law of the mind is an irrefutable principle if you must command results no matter how spiritual you are your life will eventually be a reflection of your understanding your life your physical environment will inevitably be a reflection of your understanding may not happen immediately but over a given period of time it is safe to say your experience the sum total of your experiences spiritually financially intellectually sociologically is a reflection of both your paradigm and your understanding if you lack money forever it is because there is an understanding you do not have if you are fighting with everybody forever there is an understanding you do not have are we together there can be momentary failures and setbacks agreed but when over a long period of time your experiences are the same is proof that your mindset is delivering that result say amen numbers chapter 13 we are reading from verse 25 to 33 this was the encounter of moses and the 12 spies listen and they returned from searching the land after 40 days we are reading to 33 and they went and came to moses these are the people now and aaron and to the congregation of the children of israel unto the wilderness of paran to kadesh and brought back word to them listen and unto the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land and they told them and said we came unto the land whither thou sentest us and surely it floweth with milk and honey and this is an evidence this is the fruit of it nevertheless listen this is a mindset speaking now everyone's communication is a window into your understanding you can fake it for a while 
but with time you will speak your true convictions nevertheless this is a faulty mindset interrupting the word of god the people that dwell it in the land and the cities are walled and are very great and moreover we saw the children of anak there the amalekites dwell in the land of the south the hittites and the jebusites and the amorites dwell in the mountains and the canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of jordan and caleb said kai keep quiet what is all this all you people are just bringing negative was i not there with you we saw it we just brought the fruits and caleb stilled the people before moses and said moses as far as i'm concerned this is doable let us go up at once and possess it why for we are well able someone prophesied to yourself i am well able say it again i am well able he said we are able to overcome in other words i'm not refusing it's a challenge he didn't say i'm able to go through it no you don't deny the real boy say we are able there is capacity within us to bring those giants down hallelujah this is the power of a transformed mind a man sits down and prophesies doom to himself because of his mindset i can't make it i am from kaduna state i am from plateau state i am from benway i am from kogi people from our family don't rise is a reflection of your understanding 31 but the men that were up with him said we be not able to go against the people why for they are they've not fought oh. they are, they fought in their minds and were defeated already the result of their defeat was that for we they are stronger than we and they brought up an evil report listen now what kind of report poor thinking will always make a man communicate what god calls an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of israel saying the land though we have gone through gone to search it a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature the last verse and there we saw the giants the sons of anak which come of the giants and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers and so we were in their sight the anakims never say hey grasshopper the people call themselves grasshoppers the same way you call yourself um, a weak failure the same way you call yourself all kinds of things there is a price to pay to produce extraordinary results let me tell you nobody is born with a transformed mind transformation is a spiritual investment in case you see certain people confident and commanding results again and again it is nobody is transformed by default ladies and gentlemen it is the labor dimension of the world that brings us to a point where we adjust our understanding we've done many teachings aimed at building our mindsets and our understanding have taught us how paradigms are formed the first way paradigms are formed are uh, through our cultural backgrounds we come from different cultures and then our environmental conditioning we've lived among people who have been poor and broke we have lived among people who have little or no respect for spiritual things we have lived among people who do not value the power of the word of god and unconsciously we have imbibed their way of life and their way of thinking as a paradigm a set of belief a plane of interpreting things your reality is interpreted by your perspective and if you do not allow the word of god alter your perspective you will fail in life in a way that you cannot imagine listen i don't care what physical effort you are exerting your life will eventually be a reflection of your mindset there are many people who have failed before they started it was very clear from their mindset and their thinking that they were not going to make it so they were not surprised when they failed it was just a confirmation of a defeat that had been in their minds are we together we were like grasshoppers so they called themselves 
the bible tells us how to think philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 it says finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue and if there be any praise do what thinking and wishing are two different things wishing is just mesmerizing on a result that you will never happen in your life but thinking is constructing your mind your understanding many people do not think well they don't even think at all and if they do they think on negative things listen to me much more than your physical activity focus on making sure that your mindset has been constructed to produce victory are we together you were insulted growing up you probably were abused growing up and it put something in your mind about men and you keep saying every man is a devil every man is no not every man is a devil in your world and based on your experience all the people you have encountered are bad but why don't you expand your horizon how about prosperity there are so many people when you tell them will you prosper they say when i read what <laughs> when i read what because a society has programmed your mind that your wealth is entirely dependent on just what you studied so people make they go out of their way to do malpractice because they hope that by so doing it will give them an edge correct what do you believe about yourself what do you believe about god what do you believe about life you've heard me say it again and again it never ceases to amaze me those who hang themselves or co or commit suicide i don't think i hate myself that much ah, i understand quarreling myself but to hang yourself is um is is quite you must be assisted by a spirit you become a reflection a physical reflection of your most dominant thoughts the thoughts that construct your understanding eventually become your life bring me someone who is as weak and beggarly and as villager as anything provided that person's heart is open to receive and learn give me six months with that person of thorough upgrading of his mind I'm not talking of business I'm not talking of whatever just allow me to change and alter that person's mind if I never see that person in my life again I can tell you staking my life that that person will be a success regardless of what his life is at that moment now here's the reverse accumulate a lot of physical things to hide the true state of your mind your understanding will take them away from your life until you look like what you believe are we together now let's do a little experiment look up don't feel bad how many of you have noticed that certain financial blessings only come at certain levels you never cross thirty thousand mark if somebody blesses you with two hundred thousand it will finish and return back to that range it, your understanding pegged you like the thermostat of an iron you know how an iron is you program it to be this hot when it gets there what happens it breaks that's it there are people who will never cross hundred thousand give them one million they will laugh only for one week that money the, the behavioral patterns that come from faulty thinking will alter their behavior and make them act in a way a manner that reduces them back to the mindset of those who are hundred thousand allocators so it's not enough to just claim and say i'm a millionaire there is an understanding that resonates with that level of living and you must upgrade in your mind it's like resonance in physics remember those who are science-based there's something called resonance in physics that when you hit a tuning fork is that true at a particular frequency every other object within that environment that is the same frequency without touching it starts resonating that's how it is every result you have in the spirit has a spiritual frequency mental level that calls it when you 
want a result that is higher than your level of thinking it cannot resonate to it so your mindset must rise let me tell you when it gets there it will come in a heartbeat forget about the physical activities that act themselves to manifest it in your life that's that's little issue but we focus on who will bless me and how it will come that's that's not the issue just settle it in your mind you have programmed yourself truly to be successful when you want to know the true secret behind a man's result don't look at the physical results under study the understanding of that man you see that you get blessed from successful people not just by benefiting from the result of their success unfortunately that's what mediocres do they are obsessed by the result the tie the shoe the watch the car the um, anointing the miracles wheelchair no there is an understanding that helps that man to partner with the holy spirit so that that kind of result be produced when you have that construction then you are ready for victory the price of mental transformation are you still living like your yesterday and expecting tomorrow's result it doesn't work that way sir you will never never be able to receive results at the mental states that brought the challenge that has pegged you let me tell you what challenges are challenges are a proof that your current level of understanding has reached its expiry level the moment you are confronted with an, a supposedly unsurmountable challenge is a proof to you i teach the school of ministry students that challenges are a letter from your future to you saying i am there and i am real but your mental state now cannot take you there challenges are a letter from your future to you saying i exist i am real but you will not arrive there with your current level of understanding i am passionate about god exposing my area of ignorance it doesn't embarrass me some of us are so egocentric that the moment you are aware that there is need for upgrade in an area it embarrasses us you must be flexible enough to admit that where i am is a reflection of something i do not know are we together do you believe this apostle i don't have friends everybody hates me it's a lie there is something about your understanding that keeps creating that reality apostle money comes and it disappears yes there can be demonic issues but the demons don't just come and act foolishly they act upon a mindset that can host them the day your mindset becomes hostile to their presence that's the day you break free that's why true deliverance after casting out the demons there must be a reconstruction of your understanding to make your environment no longer conducive for the activity of demon space it is almost vain to lay hands and cast out demons and leave the same mindset that brought them you are only recycling a journey of endless suffering that's why when demons find out that a particular man of god does not have intelligence enough to holistically secure people's deliverance the demons are in a hurry to leave they mock you before you raise your hand they go knowing that their access point is still there the door is open are we together something about your thinking is responsible for your limitation there is a way africa thinks we have subsistent thinking there is a way men of god think that don't give them results there is a way they think that they get results please every time you see a man of god a system a businessman whatever commanding results don't enjoy the flamboyancy of the physical results but if you really want to receive you must be able to labor to buy into their understanding so the bible says this let this mind permit this mind philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 permit this mindset this thinking this construction this set of understanding to be in you that was also in christ jesus and then things will respond to you the same way they responded to jesus born around a manger still didn't matter upgraded his mind 30 years he was to live 33 and a half years and he spent over 90 percent of his life committing to development and in three years he did something that through eternity will not recover from listen listen hear this advice never be in a rush 
to manifest physical results in your life don't be in a rush to start business someone met me one time and said sir what the way you are looking at me i don't know what i meant prophetically or physically he said what business do you think i can do i said none you will fail in every business you do no matter how simple it is and this is the reason it's not because you are lazy it is because you do not get the understanding of a prosperous person by default sincerity is one of the seed for greatness so you may be sincere it's like someone who is very sincere wants to transport you from one place to the other but cannot drive will his sincerity take you there as well meaning as that person is it's not if you die it's when that car will capsize. Don't labor to show physical results. You try to buy a shoe of 100,000 to make a statement. I guarantee you, your carelessness and your wrong thinking is going to spoil that shoe. You'll be surprised that you never kick it on a wall. But in one month, the shoe will open up. Something about your wrong belief will mount pressure on that state. Your mind is saying it's a lie. Your physical realm is not agreeing with your mental realm. Something will happen. I've given you an analogy again and again. Take a poor person. Take someone who is one of the least workers in any business organization or any company. Put him in the director's office for two weeks. Don't tell him anything. Just put him there and say, you have unlimited access to this office. Do you know what he will do? Number one, he's going to steal. Are you seeing the mindset? He will steal because he knows for sure that he's only there for a short time. Number two, he will not clean and arrange the place. What can I get? so things the mediocre what can i get not what can i give he will sit down watch television drink all the juice in the fridge snap himself take selfies and then try to what can i steal oh there's one carton of water if i take five nobody will know that's a mediocre that's the reason why he will remain where he is in two weeks he will turn that office into his mindset but take a great man to a room that is messy cobwebs everywhere and he sits down his mindset refuses and say no this is not you whoever has your mindset should sweep the room and so he sweeps the room whoever has the mindset should clean the room in five days you come back and see the same room no cobwebs he would have bought a rock to put there as at the time he was deciding he didn't have money but his mindset told him how it will come is the last the most important thing is to plan there is power when you set goals this is a renewed mind a poor man will say i beg this nigeria i don't have any father anywhere and remain there after one year he has not been able to buy a rock something about our understanding is responsible for the way we are is that true I look at myself and I look at the dimensions God wants to take me and I look at many things I do not know that is responsible for my current level of result and so I continue to search find out if I know what follow Runsha Alakija knows then I will be a billionaire in dollars correct listen respect results don't trivialize results results are not luck especially predictable results predictable result time is a revealer of the accuracy of your convictions when you see a result that is sustained it was based on laws it wasn't based on magic i can dash you one million but you cannot become a millionaire for five years by mistake no sir it's a lie i can lay hands on you temporarily and you can even lay hands on someone in the wheelchair and leave the person but brothers and sisters you will not organize crusades for two years non-stop when intrinsically you have not received that grace the bible never said the donkey talked forever he talked for a moment and his mouth was shut the bible never said the rod bothered forever psalm 78 verse 41 a scripture that has become a national anthem in this place he said but they limited the holy one they limited the holy one they were in the wilderness and they limited him can god make a way can god make a way can god make a way the bible says they limited him as mighty as god is brothers and sisters we can limit him through our understanding we can limit him 
Someone met me one time and said, Apostle, God doesn't want to encourage me to love. I said, what's the meaning of that? He said, I've told God I want to buy a Dick's Bible. I've told God I don't even want clothes for myself. Just spiritual items, messages, anointing oil, all these kind of things. And God, nobody is even help. And I said, show me the paper where you wrote them down. Show me the scripture you, at, you, you put on them. And he said, no, I don't have anything. I said, so if I were God, I would do the same thing. Show me the paper. Where have you gone to the market to find out how much anointing oil is? That's a proof of faith. It's a sign that you know it will come. Faith is conviction and the action you take based on that conviction. Are we together? Yes. Let me tell you how to know people don't walk by faith. They are vague in their expectations. Vagueness is a sign you are not sure the result will come. The Bible says, give us. He told you who to give. Number two, he says, this day, when, what, our daily bread. Give us, this day, our daily bread. Specificity is very important in manifesting faith. So that when the result comes, you are sure that this is what I released my faith for. Is God speaking to us? When you package your physical environment without the requisite mental upgrade and transformation, you have only flattered yourself. It's like throwing your money in a basket because everything will disappear. Please hear me, ladies and gentlemen, especially for we who are young. I know that we live in a society that mounts pressure on a gentleman and a lady to show. Uh -uh, you finished school four years ago till now. You can't even buy a nice jean. And so we go out of our way to try to paint our physical world to look like a reality that we have upgraded ourselves into. And we keep, you notice that you keep rising up and falling. Rising up and falling. Your physic, you try to fake it, your mindset brings you back. That's what happened to many of our loved ones. I've told people, why fake something that can be real? You don't have to fake it when it can be real brothers and sisters hear me you may be in a small one room right now no carpet no recharge card no nothing you are using a, a simple phone that you don't even know the name there's no name on it you just bought it somewhere don't allow that disturb you if you can take the word of god the beautiful thing about your mind is that it's not limited by time and space continue to upgrade yourself in the name of Jesus, I may have Gary today, but I will feed nations. And you study the word of God and it's constructing your mind. There is he that stirreth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Ah, so an attachment for things is why money doesn't come. You write it in the name of Jesus. I have no attachment to things. When God brings them, money is a slave and a servant. Never to become a God and a master. I am a giver. And then you study again. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. So that ye having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. So it's God that can make all grace abound. That means I don't need to worry about how the results will happen. It is God's office that allocating how the physical results will manifest. Are we together? You begin to study. You see. The Bible says love never fails. That means if there is anything that is failing in my life, when I add love to it, I can turn the results around. So you construct your mindset. Let me tell you the first thing that will happen to you when your mind begins to transform. Your environment will start fighting you because immediately your friends and your environment, your thinking will start making you act in a physical way that will make them say, what are, are you the only one who is a Christian? What is all these things? We are, we are talking about all of these things. I beg, man must walk. And he said, no, sorry, I don't speak like that again. With all due respect, something is happening to me. He said, eh, you... You better finish all that grammar and let's come and soak Gary. They are trying to pull you back. Say the devil is a liar. Say it again. And they will pull you back and say, it's true. Let me go back, Jerry. This koinonia thing, you are just talking like fools. Even God knows. Well, will I lie? I'm like that. I'm, I'm not. And you start complaining and reprogram yourself back to your current state. 
while people are watching football you buy a book 500 naira and you sit down when people are hilariously celebrating birthdays when they don't have any money god just opens a door 10,000 naira and you just say ah my birthday is tomorrow kai will i die like that let me enjoy myself are we together your birthday clothes eight thousand whatever else you buy you cook and the money has finished and you feel good about that day and continue suffering or someone can say this is my birthday i may not be a millionaire overnight but let me make it the last birthday when by this time one year i should at least be able to have options for the food i eat we don't make that decision we don't study what are you doing i'm browsing something what who is that um, somebody he i mean very powerful is a wonderful christian and he's speaking minded of great people say i beg i want to watch one film it just came out am, am i mocking movies no please don't don't misunderstand me but i'm saying if you continue to flatter yourself and not commit yourself to personal development you will never be great I was talking with a dear friend today and I was telling them gone are the days where people think ministers are daft people they are just people who manipulate the minds of people ministers are very intelligent people it takes a lot of intelligence alongside spirituality to be able to communicate thoughts I was coming with one of the protocol persons and when we we're coming I was asking him what he's doing now and he said he wanted to go into public speaking and I said wow I said really everybody's a public speaker the moment you are a leader in any field you are a public speaker public speaking is all about communicating thoughts it takes intelligence it takes psychology it takes leadership it takes content not just that god sent you and say go to america go to um whatever and then you go and stand and say well the most important thing is the miracle that will happen right now don't worry what if you like be sleeping while i'm talking you will soon suspect you and say you are a herbalist because the foundation upon which the power comes you see our incompetence raises the propensity for suspicion especially where you know that there is the lavish anointing of god upon your life you must have both a sound word and intellectual balance so that as you are communicating the word of god there is a a synergy with your result Anybody that listens knows that, no, 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 this person has paid his price. I would be silly believing that he should not be at this level of results. Say in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to pay the price of mental transformation. I buy the truth and I sell it not. Hallelujah. One way we transit mentally is to find out those who are current reflections of our aspirations and then to buy into their thinking and their paradigms here's how the bible puts it it says follow them so not everybody is worthy of being followed it says honor all men but you can't follow all men listen there is this african trado african mentality of loyalty to people ideas and systems that are obsolete and do not have capacity to make you great listen the bible says and david served his generation every generation has a curriculum of understanding you must understand the generation with which you are sent to minister to and be able to construct your mind to understand their needs and how best to communicate it i'm sent to minister to all men but i always tell people that the age range of my influence and my impact is 15 to 50. If you are within the range, age range of 15 to 50, you are within my generation of influence. Now that does not mean people like our daddy and our elderly ones here, I will bless you, but you will be surprised that Bishop Oyedeko and Papa Adeboye will be more useful to them than a young man like me is that true because they grew with that generation if you're a ministry here and people tell you are ministering to young people you better rejoice and don't think it's an embarrassment because that means you'll be ministry for a long time if you're a ministry and every of your member is at least 60 65 i have a very sad news for you you are not going to last because um those people are at the level of their life where they are interested in legacy 
don't tell them speak well no not at that age my brother they are writing books and mentoring another generation we laugh at those in children's ministry and say are ah, you as big as you are those children in 20 years will become leaders now in the world we have young people i foresee times when in the next 10 15 years you will have presidents in their 20s young people whose minds are malleable and flexible the world has grown enough to discern results more than biological age when you have results they allow you look at france has already set the pace now with their prime minister other nations will follow through a time will come when if you are not competent early you will join a queue that will never reach your turn forever i want you to believe what i'm saying it is true it is good that a man bears his yoke in his youth pay the price now pay the price now you may be laughed at now but pay the price are we blessed change your perception change your paradigm don't focus on just starting business as wonderful as that is or getting a job as wonderful as that is pay the price pay the price to build your mind then your job I have said it again and again I'm not necessarily talking about money but you don't make money off business you make money off your understanding you don't become great off the physical things you do you become great off your understanding may the Lord cause us to be men and women of great understanding in the name of Jesus you've heard me say it again and again that we will all be great but the greater part of the news is that we will all know ourselves you will see it happen yes you will see it happen we may not look like it now the Bible says now are we the sons of God it says and it doth not yet appear until you see the quality of children that our generation will produce filled with the Holy Ghost from age two why because a healthy mindset is the head of that family loving God because you understand the principles that at age 60 you look 30 because both the joy and the peace and the prosperity of the Lord together have constructed and extended your life in quietness and peace that you will be called Pula and Hefziba unperturbed by the vicissitudes of life and people ask you how are you doing it you say I can reproduce it again and again it was not luck pray in one minute and say Lord help me grant me grace to be passionate about transforming my understanding stop complaining about the physical results you do not see brothers and sisters that should be the least of your concern Lord deliver me from a fake life are we praying deliver me from a life that tries to show I am there when I am not there I receive the patience I receive the patience I know that I'm not going to become a millionaire overnight I would not become anointed overnight I receive the patience to carefully build my understanding lift your voice and pray there is an understanding that will make me an exceptional man of God there is an understanding that will make me an exceptional wife exceptional husband exceptional career person exceptional businessman an exceptional politician I focus on mental transformation I pay attention to look for men and women who are a reflection of my desire. Your future is somebody's experience today. And the Bible instructs that we are transformed by the word of God. But again, by following them who through faith and understanding, allowing our minds to rise above our cultural limitations. Everything they have told you growing up, you will never be great. You are poor. You are small you are in an entity you probably have failed again and again in life to a point where you do not believe that there is such a possibility for favor something has told you you will never be a good wife you will never be a good husband it could be friends backgrounds i'd like you to pray and say i cast down every imagination and every thought that exalts itself above the knowledge of christ i bring every thought to the obedience of christ i decree and declare that i am well able Ten times better my life has no limitations my only limitation is the voice of the Spirit in the name of Jesus I am limitless hallelujah 
listen don't listen to what i'm saying and think i'm just talking nonsense if you don't believe what i'm telling you you'll fail in life yes you will and you will live an angry and resentful life our society is full of very angry people do you know one of the reasons why people are angry is not because of their challenges it's because of their understanding and their interpretation of it the bible says to rejoice in the lord rejoice in what if you rejoice in your certificate one day it will make you angry the day you are not promoted if you rejoice just in your husband alone your wife alone your child your car your business all those things they fluctuate but it says rejoice in a constant factor called the Lord and again I say rejoice and your joy will never have a reason to bend when when you see people happy and making merriment and rejoicing sometimes they say, ah, these people are lucky if you know what those people are going through half it may kill you but they have made up their minds that their joy is not defined by the things around them they understand that joy is a fetcher in the realm of the spirit you use it to draw from the wells of salvation it's not circumstances that make, the bible says the joy of the lord is your strength meaning when i lose joy i lose strength and satan understands this so he will orchestrate it i thought you said you will enter a relationship by january you even open your mouth and told people now is november oh, my sister and you just say hi how about god there are many men in koinonia now will they see me you are already responding to it but the joy of the lord oh lord i give you praise i thank you where is the god that brought the servant of isaac to come and meet rebecca that same god will connect me lord i give you praise before the arrival of the man i continue working on myself to become a woman of virtue that the day that gentleman sees me he will never be able to sleep again good preparation what do you do while waiting for your miracle? Among many things, praise and prepare. Mm. Praise and prepare. Is God blessing us? Yes. You will never, and I say it with all humility, you'll never see me putting my hand on my chin and say, Hi, life. You say, Why now? I say, Nigeria, you not seeing what is happening. I choose to be joyful I choose to make merry in my world there is absolute peace the world you talk about is the one your mindset created oh in my world there is peace and love and joy apostle you see what is going on in this country I know but I know that there is a God in heaven he was not dethroned he's alive hallelujah he's alive apostle are you hearing that terrorists are entering churches and bombing everywhere oh i understand that as the mountains surround jerusalem there is a construction i am happy joy is a defense you plant fear and plant hatred and before you know it what you used to believe you now stop it and throw it away no be joyful prophesy to your neighbor say be joyful say to another remain joyful, remain joyful. amen yes when two people are fighting the first thing that disappears is laughter so when you cannot laugh and you are happy before god something is wrong oh god i'm here again Abba, you say better come and answer me what is all this thing i'm saying is it that you are not seeing my own prayer request or is it that apostle son is not touching my own what is all this i keep writing this thing and when you the devil say please continue i i beg you continue you frustrate satan when you look at your challenges and rejoice before them he says what then do i do it's a sign you are not living in the flesh are we together you get up in the morning and there's no food and you can have a sarcastic roommate or neighbor who says pastor gary has finished though they say it with sarcasm are, are you do you have people like that around your life yes they will say to me please prosperity confessor gary has finished there is soup but no gary i tell god there is already soup just help us with gary they try to mock you but do you know mockery is a mystery every time listen every time men are mocking you it's a sign something has left heaven and satan is trying to use men to stop it read your bible every time they mocked men when the mockery was at the apex the result was almost arriving When we started out in ministry, many people mocked and said nonsense and said all kinds of things. 
and the Lord told me just continue to rejoice and celebrate and hallelujah look what he's done and will continue to do by his grace make up your mind that you are going to be a happy person make up your mind from today's teaching that you will be joyful apostle nine o'clock my rent must be paid my brother anger will not pay rent your your annoyance will not even add to it so you better be happy because even physically it can make some what is making you joyful like this and you say i'm smiling in the midst of the storm i say storm what storm and the person comes in tell your loved ones to be happy our generation of young people are becoming unnecessarily old because of stress you see somebody 20 years old they tell you he has bp <laughs> so what are you thinking about saying my life i'm 20 i'm not in a relationship like, ah, are you joking what in the world is this what's what's wrong with you listen to our character building series work on your mind what did you watch which movies have you been watching that have raped away your patience but when you see somebody rejoicing always happy you come back from koinonia i'm happy somebody's grumbling in the car you just say well god bless you you arrive home you are happy what will we eat well there may not be food and truly sometimes it can be painful but lord i give you all the praise how long will i keep dancing for as long as the answer comes let me tell you waiting for miracles is like getting pregnant i would never have the privilege of having that experience but one thing i know is that i've been in the hospital many times to see the joy of giving birth to a child for as soon as you travel travel in joy brothers and sisters the god who promised you will bring it to pass oh yes i have seen men celebrate the victory of trusting God I will hold on if I perish I perish if God said it I believe him is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am God is speaking to you. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Listen, brothers and sisters, hear me encourage you tonight. Be patient with God. Be patient. Be patient with God. It didn't take you one day to build that understanding. Just continue with God. Apostle, it's been three years I've been coming for Koinonia. I can't even pay my transport. Don't worry. The word of God is working. The day the miracle will come, not even your prayer will stop it. God says it's too late. When your mindset has built it, no. A day will come. In one month, you will see cars in Koinonia. You'll be like, oh, it's a season. It's not a season. The, if the car is being given to you now your colleagues are saying my brother won't you buy a car don't worry don't go and kill yourself trying to get loan anywhere just calm down leave the issue of loan and stay with God take your Okada with honor and give God praise the day to come it will come in a grand style I assure you You have only two shirts. I've noticed this is the only thing you wear. Well, I'm not ashamed of it. At least I'm not a thief. I will iron the shirt. It's faded. But I thank God you are seeing it now. I was looking at some of my photos today. So I'm not even very... I looked at some of them and I said, Ah! God, you are faithful. What are we saying? You are so faithful. Listen. Let me give many of you a message of hope at your level i was worse than how you look now so you better encourage yourself and say if i'm at this level and i'm already smiling like this it means when i get to a level higher than where i am is joy unspeakable and full of glory number four what's the third price is the price of being skillful write it down the price of being valuable the price of being skillful Proverbs chapter 18 verse 16 it's become an anthem in koinonia the gift of a man and I add the gift of a man that's been identified 
developed and added to with excellence take note not just the gift of a man the raw material potential gift no sir it won't bring you before great men the gift of a man an ability a potential identified developed are we together now and then alongside excellence when you serve your gift with excellence the bible says it will make room hallelujah and will bring you before great men nobody celebrates potential we recognize potential but we celebrate potential that has been developed the world we live in rewards value you must be able to rise to a point where you provide value that is needed and useful not value that you know your value must be needed and useful the kingdom of god is built upon a reward system listen carefully the kingdom of god is built upon a reward system money being only one of the rewards ease is a reward for being valuable are we together now very important proverbs chapter 13 verse 15 it says good understanding procures favor good understanding gives favor good understanding is like a pregnant woman when she gives birth the name of her child is favor it says but the way of the transgressor a transgressor is not a sinner the way of a transgressor is hard hardship has a formula you can predict it good understanding giveth favor but the way of transgressors is what you must be skillful nobody stays close to me and refuses to be skillful you must be skillful we train the leaders in this ministry to be skillful the workers everybody you must be skillful oh i can sing wonderful but will don muen call you because of your voice have you worked upon yourself what do you know about singing the truth is that many of us at least to an appreciable level we have discovered areas here and there in our lives but the challenge for many of us is the mental and physical inertia that laziness to develop ourselves to a point where we get to a point of unconscious competence everybody shout it after me say competence say it again competence let me tell you something i've learned about competence competence defies age gender tribal and racial um, differences and, and all of and sentiments I have seen people rewarded regardless of where they came from I've seen people rewarded and blessed different fields listen anything you are doing if you do not plan to be a leader in that field don't do it are we together I will never commit my energy to anything that I will not be a leader in whether it is ministry whether it is business you may start small but your the those who are rewarded in any field are the leaders of the field in the academia the professor collects the highest salary why because he has been able to upgrade his mind and access value to that point where he deserves it you may be a student or a lecturer or a staff or a worker but if you have not risen to that level of competence you may never have the privilege of access make up your mind that I will be competent say it I will be competent say it again I must be competent the law of value your value when developed decide who pursues you your value when developed decides who pursues you Mike Mudok teaches that your a problem is an invitation for a reward a problem is an invitation for a reward until there is a problem that you can solve I teach our school of ministry students that you are unnecessary herein lies the mystery of people ignoring you when you are not valuable you will not be a friend to anybody write this down discover and develop problem solving skills 
discover and develop problem solving skills be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored be a master brothers and sisters what we do that you call ministry is solving problems you know I've said it again and again many people get angry when men of God are blessed because many people carry they propose that understanding that men of God are lazy people who just receive free money from people if they believe that men of God eat the church tithe and offerings and they buy cars and buy houses it may be true for some but it's not so for most men of God become blessed because they are offering value that the value is spiritual in context now I am teaching you is that true I'm reshaping your mind I'm adding value to you the system of the kingdom is every time you dispense value whether you sell it or give it free you are authorized to be rewarded are we together now you only have a problem with a man who you see blessings in his life whether financial and otherwise and you cannot see the value equivalent so when I look at a billionaire like Bill Gates I see the value equivalent that's why we don't harass him if I look at a criminal who is not offering any value yet his bank account is fat then I know that the equation does not balance before you ever criticize a blessed man examine the value now you may not have risen to a level of perception where you think what is doing is valuable enough to bring reward but it still does not matter everybody say I will be valuable say it again I will be valuable I will be skillful become a master at something koinonia and wave poverty goodbye become a master at something if I ask you what are you a master at and you cannot tell me in one word at best you will wallow around the realm of mediocrity and never rise up to be something the concept of being multi-talented is good but those who are masters in life are known for something there must be a skill that sets you out then other skills are auxiliary supporting skills that lift you are we together now I'm not only a man of God and many other things but most people know me as a man of God and they may think that's all I am and that's all that I do there are many other aspects to my life but there is always a skill that opens the door that skill that brings you to the table of greatness then you leverage upon that and other gifts and talents are now supporting is that true yes you must be valuable now the oil in Nigeria and Africa is having a lot of problem fluctuations here and there and you can see that the whole nation is moving down that's a sign that we were never offering real value are we together if we were offering real value the depleting of the oil prices should not affect our GDP necessarily because there should be skilled labor there should be captains of industry and people who are skilled because we are largely depending on oil there is very little reward this uh, our society pays very very little reward on meritocracy the people the those who deserve things are not rewarded but in certain parts of the world where you are content even if they hate you that reward for sure will come to you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you may you be valuable being valuable will drive shame out of your life I tell you this being valuable the Bible says study to show yourself approved it says a workman that needed not to be ashamed there is a relationship between ignorance and shame are we together there is a relationship there is a correlation between ignorance and shame those who are angry insulting every blessed person insulting those who are making things happen in society are those who have not paid the price to identify their giftings their ability their skill their talent and to invest time resources and humility to build themselves to a point where they become leaders of their field I've made up my mind that in everything I'm involved in I will be flawlessly competent it's a commitment I've made to myself and I pray that you make that commitment tonight never settle the enemy of your next level is the success of your last level be careful 
failure does not make people fail it stimulates them to go high but the moment you begin to achieve results there is a chance that you will be complacent I will be valuable become a master solution provider there is no mystery about wealth it's not a miracle it's not magic it's a system a reward system of the kingdom remember that I said your value on its own cannot bless you it must be developed everybody say developed there is a season of refining your value one gentleman sent me a text in the course of the week and said apostle i'm starting ministry i don't know exactly what to do but i believe that as i start i think i hope i'm getting what he said correctly i'm starting and i know that god will bless me just speak a word i said no sir it's not a word that moves ministry a word is over you then principles guide you as you walk obviously that gentleman will not last one month he will be angry at the neighboring churches and be angry at members who come and go and not know why they are going you hear people complain why will you come to my church and receive miracles and go away and they think the solution is just prayer man of God change my story yes God can change your story but the men of God or the men that come to your church are human beings they respond to value by the time you continue to give people information that are needed and useful and they watch their lives transform the bible says he makes me lie down in green pastures you cannot make them lie down but you can make the pastures green then they will come and lie down they never visit green pastures when it is truly green they lie down information that is spiritual information that is transforming information that is needed and useful well researched and intelligently communicated backed up by the anointing of the spirit that's the kind of information that stays in today's world and in today's church any other information outside this let me tell something with members members are very funny they can say ah you know you say something that is complete rubbish and somebody stands up and says my god and while they are doing that you are so impressed with yourself and next sunday he never comes again members for you are we learning how was my preaching today ah, i mean i can't even start i mean it was it was it was strange and instead of the man of god to be honest enough to admit that guy and try and go back and trust god to help he said you mean it i mean that's that's he says, sir this message is a, is a bestseller and then the mem the person does not come the moment somebody opens a church near you in a heartbeat they will leave you because they were never loyal to you they are loyal to themselves and their commitment to their transformation and if you lose relevance and you cannot be a strategic contributor to their growth spiritually and otherwise then there's no reason why they listen to you i've committed myself that nobody listens to me and just says this person well, well just a daft no 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 it takes a lot of study it takes a lot of labor research commitment i'm committed to doing it this is the key to remaining relevant are we together you must be skillful write this scripture down we're not turning for time's sake genesis 41 um okay let's just look at two verses genesis 41 the whole scripture is from verse 14 to 46 that's the whole context from verse 14 to 46 but please give us 14 and 31 this was Joseph now the Bible says then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh are we together now he began to interpret Pharaoh's dream and then to prefer a solution and in verse 33 now therefore let Pharaoh look out for a man look at a politician after he finishes marketing himself he said Pharaoh it's not like I'm saying I want to be the one but you since you are smart who has committed himself to being that valuable look for a man who is discreet and wise and when you find such a man mm, when you find such a man do what he sees he programmed his own promotion when you find that man this is the level of result that should be given to that man 
set him over the land of Egypt and Pharaoh said unto Joseph for as much as God has shown you this there is none so discreet and wise everybody say mastery it's leadership this is called leadership pace setting trailblazing that no, this is not competition this is the reward that comes when you labor and stand out. Competition is in the realm of mediocres. You never see planes clashing in the air because there's enough space. It's cars that move around and have traffic for a very long time. You seldom see traffic in the air. There is space for champions. Hallelujah. Say I'm one of them. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, for as much as God has showed you this, there is none so discreet and wise. Let's continue reading. Um, Thou shalt immediately be over my house, and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. Go ahead. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have said thee this day over all the land of Egypt. Did he ask him what tribe? Did he ask him, Are you a Jew or you are this? <laughs> you have solved my problem, you have reward. And Pharaoh took off his ring. The ring in his hand and put it upon joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck go ahead he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had and they cried before him bow the knee and he made him ruler over the land of egypt let's see something interesting that happened now and pharaoh said unto joseph i am pharaoh and without thee shall no man authority through competence shall no man lift his hand or foot in the land of egypt let's finish it two more verses and pharaoh called joseph's name but whatever that is that's a very long name there and he gave him to wife asena free wife getting a wife becomes easy when you are valuable this is the revelation god is giving us yes you can clap getting a wife becomes almost effortless when you are valuable God programmed that way. Not everybody will produce the same result, but there must be a token, a token, a sign that you are going somewhere. And Joseph went over the land of Egypt. The last verse, how old was he? And Joseph was what? This is somebody's lifetime achievement. He did it at age 30. If you got born again at 30, you are behind time. I teach on the graph of life. You can get my message. That's a sign that you need to catch up. And when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout the land of Egypt. Your competence can give God space to lift you. Your competence can give God space to lift you. Make up your mind to be valuable pray in one minute before we talk about the last point and then we'll pray father in name of jesus i receive grace to be skillful lift your voice and pray plant in me a resentment for mediocrity plant in me a resentment for average being a local champion being satisfied by little results being celebrated by mediocres competing myself with people who are not even doing anything i receive grace are you praying in the name of Jesus I declare I decree and I declare go ahead and pray Lord I will rise in business I set myself to become a leader in that field in the mighty name of Jesus in my career I will rise to a managerial level I will not stop till I reach the apex I will not celebrate the mediocrity that has come with my background if you're a northern and pray hard pray twice in the name of Jesus the mediocrity that comes with my territory I, I declare that I break through it if I need to take certifications I set myself to personal development if I need to upgrade myself in knowledge I receive grace if I need seminars and training I receive grace if I need to submit myself consciously for mentorship I receive grace grace to follow those who through faith and patience I will not waste my day again I will turn my laptop to a university I will turn my Android device to a university I take advantage of the information on the internet in ministry in business I find out the leaders in my field and I press to know what they know hallelujah let me tell you how to know you are becoming a leader when somebody is following you. 
if there is nobody following you to learn from you you are not a leader you claim you are a businessman show me those who you have raised because wisdom is justified by her children most people who follow you are people you have mentored unconsciously you were minding your business producing results and your result became too obvious to be ignored the book of mark says all men seek for thee please if you truly are part of this ministry resent mediocrity are we together resent mediocrity doesn't matter whether you graduated with a pass up graduated with whatever you can re-engineer yourself re-educate yourself then you will change your finances then you will change that talk that 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 statements they always make they will continue to jay at you and say saul killed one thousand david killed ten thousand competition will never leave the habitation of mediocres there is a realm you must rise to repeated mistakes are a sign that you are in ignorance before you take out any physical step again go for knowledge number four pray in the spirit for one minute thank you lord jesus your word is changing me i receive grace hallelujah the fourth price and will be done for today please i want to have everybody's attention because what i'm about to teach you is a very big secret most of you may think you know it but i want you to listen to me with your spirit listen with your heart the price of building quality relationships is the fourth price you must pay if you want to establish extraordinary results in your life the price of building quality relationships relationships are advantageous connections connections relationships are advantageous connections the easiest way to be wealthy and to be blessed in life is through relationships i've taught you this i'm repeating it so that you will understand the easiest way to be blessed in life brothers and sisters is through relationship relationships are powerful relationships are irrefutable there is no champion without quality relationships relationships are currencies they can buy anything money can buy anything money can buy relationships can buy it the only reason why money is useful is because there is a human being at the other end to collect it that human being can choose to say my relationship has paid for it i've said it again if you use money to pay for everything in life you are not working in wisdom now money is only one of many currencies relationship being the highest at the keda second only to godliness and your spiritual connection let me tell you something of all the currencies that men used to purchase results in life physical money notes currencies is the least of them there are seven currencies i hope that by god's grace i'll teach it next year seven currencies we use to purchase results in life everything in life is bought it's just that money is not the only currency relationship is a priceless currency higher than gold higher than the dollar learn this god called abraham alone and lot who was related went with him that was the only thing lot did and he became stupendously wealthy relationships can determine the next course of your results and lack of it can keep you stagnated almost for a lifetime please i want you to learn this the presence of a quality relationship in your life can define the next level of your success lack of it can stagnate you sometimes even for a lifetime you are one quality relationship underline quality you are one quality relationship away from your next level of results believe me on this you are one quality relationship away from the next level of your results 
you know all of this already my emphasis is not just to talk about the relationships but to be able to guide us on principles i've noticed believers know very little about relationships this is why many of us have been grounded although skilled a few scriptures four of them one amos chapter 3 verse 3 please write it down the bible says can two walk together except they be agreed modern day interpretation two cannot walk together unless they be compatible there must be similarity in their paradigms and understanding two people cannot become friends when there is a large difference in their perspectives there must be similarity you must believe similar things about god about life about money about family it qualifies you to be friends second scripture very very touching scripture proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24 proverbs chapter 18 and 24 it tells us that he who desires friends you must sow that seed proverbs 18 and verse 24 lets us know that relationship is a harvest meaning that until you sow that seed there is no harvest of relationship it says a man that had friends must first show himself what friendly and trying to show yourself friendly will require you for bearing and even sticking closer than a brother most of us want the harvest of friendship and relationships and we never sow the seeds you don't go to a farm at around this time waiting to harvest when you did not plant relationships are harvests we must sow the seeds proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 read with me one to read he that walketh with the wise shall do what but a friend of foolish friends what will he get it didn't say foolish people don't have a future that's not what the bible is saying the bible says you are a product of your environment he that walks with the wise shall himself be wise but a companion of fools shall be destroyed please write this down everyone relationships do not maintain themselves relationships do not maintain themselves it takes commitment on the part of all the parties involved to maintain relationships relationships do not maintain themselves this is a fallacy that many of us must be delivered from relationships do not maintain themselves it takes commitment on the part of all not some all the parties involved to maintain relationships please listen to this and you will be surprised that you will multiply your success relationships do not maintain themselves apostle people don't like me show me the seeds you are sowing the seeds of friendship are we together now apostle nobody wants to walk this koinonia people say they say greet one another they don't even greet me no sir how to maintain relationships this is the crux of the teaching how to maintain relationships i want to give you seven keys every one of us make sure you learn these keys if you truly learn these keys i give you a guarantee those outside is dark but make sure you're writing those online connecting everywhere i want to show you the reason why your favor might be delayed number one the first key to maintaining relationships is avoid competitive jealousy write it down key number one you cannot sustain quality relationships until you are ready to avoid like a cancer competitive jealousy we're going to read all the scriptures every scripture i'm giving you are going to read so media please help us on that wise i'll give you a number of scriptures proverbs 14 verse 30 quickly please then we'll look at 27 verse 4 proverbs 14 and verse 30 the bible says a sound heart is the life of the flesh are we together read the b part it says but envy or jealousy is what rottenness 
it has a a disease effect to your bones let me tell you something competitive jealousy destroys you jealousy is like a wound competitive jealousy destroys you believers are very very competitive people jealous people you bought this car, I buy it too. You bought this suit, I buy it too. If, if, you know, I'm not just saying it for Koinonia alone, but this is something I've observed. This is one of the reasons why many believers worldwide, especially in the African continent, we are obsessed with the passion to prove points. And so we do not have the patience to allow time and preparation to come to fruition. Men of God compete with themselves. And all kinds of things there there are healthy dimensions of competition when you're speaking from a business perspective and you can challenge yourself and spoil yourself to excellence but the church has a plague of competitive jealousy members hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching